Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Christy Moody. I head the corporate ratings team for Standard & Poor's here in EMEA. Today I'm with Karen Erlander, an associate in our corporate ratings group. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Karen is an expert in the European regulated utilities sector and she's going to explain to us today how those entities have been particularly stable uh, despite the recession, despite the downturn we've been through, the background to those stable ratings and particularly prospects for the future. So let's start with that, Karen. Uh, stable, uh, unstable, explain the background to the, uh, the ratings that we've got on those entities. You know, it, it's, um, Chris, it's a very stable sector we're looking at. It's a regulated industry. And at the moment, 39 um, of the issuers have a, reg a stable outlook on the ratings mm -hmm. out of 42 in mm -hmm. total. So it's generally a very stable sector. And underpinning this is we tend to assess uh, the business risk profile as excellent uh, because they operate under an operating license. They tend to be long term. So they benefit from, if you like, a natural monopoly. Um, and therefore, they're regulated by an authority. So all their tariff sets, um, revenues, operating costs, um, capital expenditure programs um, are regulated by a regulator in each jurisdiction. And we assess these uh, regulatory frameworks uh, based on um, um, predictability, stability, transferability, etc. Um, and um, because all the revenues are regulated, um, it protects them. They make them more resilient uh, to an economic downturn than many of the unregulated businesses that are exposed to uh, commercial businesses. Okay. But as I understand it, Karen, the, the regulators um, look at prices and, 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 the, and the financial models of those entities. I, I think it's called the reset. I wonder what, what you think about the regulatory reset risk in, in these entities, as, as a number of them are coming up to resets, I mm. think. You know, it, it's correct. Um, we see that uh, the regulatory reset risk is increasing. A number of jurisdictions are due to enter into a new regulatory period. Uh, the regulatory periods vary, uh, could be three, five years, for instance. And for instance, we have Finland, Belgium, Northern Ireland, uh, part of the Swedish energy market, uh, are uh, entering into a new regulatory period from mm -hmm. 1st of January 2012. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of information about um, the new, new regulation that will apply. Uh, and as long as there is uncertainty, we factor in a certain degree of risk. Mm -hmm. It's sort of greater than it would be if they were in the middle of a period. Uh, and also in, um, in the UK, um, of course, the uh, regulator for Wales and England, Ofgem, uh, they are reviewing the whole framework at the moment. It's under extensive consultation. And before we know more details, it's difficult to make an assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, but there could be quite a lot of changes made uh, to the framework. Okay. Uh, and do you think those uh, resets will, will have a, a, a positive impact on credit quality or a negative? Is it, is it easy to uh, generalize or, or is it quite specific depending on the jurisdiction and the industry? It's very specific. Mm. And it's very difficult to make an assessment before we get more details. Okay. Um, we had a case in Netherlands, for instance, where they reset the efficiency targets, the cost savings measures mm -hmm. were um, turned around, if you like, when they entered into a new regulatory period, which mm -hmm. was um, unexpected. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to make an assessment before we um, have more details. And that's where the transparency come in. Mm -hmm. Some jurisdictions are more um, transparent in the way they communicate with the um, uh, their stakeholders mm -hmm. before they enter into a new regulatory period. Okay. Now, uh, another angle to this, uh, I think, is that, is that these entities are providing essential services uh, in countries where they're, 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 um, they're the utility is of national importance. So how is the, the sovereign stress that's playing out in Europe now uh, affecting these entities? And, and again, your, uh, you know, your view about prospects for the future. Mm. It, it, you could argue that there are two ways to look at it, either a direct impact, because many of the um, utilities we rate, the regulated utilities, are government-related entities, which means that they are um, partially or wholly owned by the government. 
and as you say, they have um, strategic importance for the nation. Mm. Uh, so we assess them as government-related entities, and um, pressure on the sovereign, uh, followed by rating action, would tend to have a, a direct impact on the credit quality of that issuer or utility. Um, it could also be an indirect impact in that pressure on the sovereign would or could um, impact the utility's access to capital markets and funding sources. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the two aspects to that, really. Right. Yeah. Interesting. But I, I think, I think I, I'm getting the message, Karen, that, that uh, mm. prospects r remain either solid or, or, or reasonably positive, stable. I think you said. Mm. Um, what, what, what threats, though, might there be on the horizon for those uh, relatively stable prospects? Um, it's similar to what we've seen in the last couple of years. It's large investment programs. Um, these utilities have to provide networks to new power producers onshore wind farms, offshore wind farms, um, conventional power plants, nuclear plants. Um, there has to be a connection between the power plant and the rest of the network. Uh, and also, they are facing aging networks that need replacement. Mm -hmm. So generally, these entities have large capex programs. Uh, they've scaled them down a little bit, but still quite large. Mm -hmm. And because many of them are government owned, they can't easily access uh, the capital markets for equity. So they tend to um, uh, fund these investments with debt. So debt levels increase, um, which put pressure on the cash flow coverage of debt metrics and the financial risk profile. Okay. Karen, thank you very much for that summary of uh, the, the credit prospects in the regulated utilities industry today. Thanks again. Thank you.